Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I have a brand new stamp set to show you. This set is done with Art Impressions in conjunction with Simon Says Stamps. Let's take a quick look at this set here. This is so cute. This again is a Simon Says Stamp exclusive stamp set. And you could see all these cute little images that you get. It does include the coordinating dies and lots of little sentiments as well. And it has a bit of a Mother's Day theme and a Get Well theme here. And this is called the Home and Heart stamp set. We're going to be using the little bears down here on the right hand side of that stamp set. And for paper, I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And for ink, I'm using the Tim Holtz Archival Ink in Vintage Photo. This is a permanent ink. So I've grabbed that little stamp. I'm placing it in my Mini Misty. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp this. Now the reason I'm using the Vintage Photo today is I want to keep the images and all the little pieces here today fairly subtle. We're going to be going with the pastel theme. And so I don't want my stamping to be uh, too severe. I thought the black might be a little bit too severe for this card that I'm going for, for the look of the card that I'm going for. So to start my coloring, I'm using Sugared Almond Pink, Beige, and Mid Brown. And these are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. And these are a water-based pen. And you can see there that I'm using my Zig Blender pen to do my blending, but you could also use a water brush here as well. So I'm laying down that lighter brown color and then I'm coming in to add my shadows. And then I'll just pull these two colors together and bring those into the center of the bear there. Just kind of leaving my shadows around the edges. And then I'll gently go around the pink and later on we'll add a little bit more pink to the cheeks as well. So you can do your blending in a variety of ways here. You could Lay down your lighter color and blend that out completely and then add your darker shadows and then blend that into your lighter color. But I find it just as easy and it really comes out really well if you just lay down both colors at the same time. You can also use your lighter shade to do your blending rather than the blender pen. So you could be using that beige to do your blending as well. But I like the blender pen because sometimes I want to remove ink and you can see me doing that there as well. I'm just kind of pulling some of that color off and scribbling it onto my scrap paper. So the blender pen allows me to do a little bit more of that technique. So now let's go ahead and do the little baby bear and I'm going to do that pretty much the same way. Just kind of adding my shadows where they their, their bodies meet there, where their cheeks meet. I'm just adding a little bit of shadow there and then kind of underneath the chin as well. And again, today we're going for a really pastel look. We're going to be using shades of light green, yellow, blue, and pink, and then a little bit of that gray. Now you can see when I blend out that pink, it gets a little bit light. So I'm coming in with a bit more of that pink color and we can just blend that in. You can keep adding layers of that until you get that look that you're going for. A little bit more shadowing around the nose. Now I'm just going to do the little paws. And just to let you know that all of the products I'm using today are listed and linked down below and also on my blog as well. So now that we have those little bears all set, let's go ahead and do her little dress. And I'm using sugared almond pink and pink. And here's where you, where you will see that blender pen comes in handy because as I blend in that darker pink, I don't want the dress to get too, too dark. So I'm doing a little blending, then I'm scribbling that excess ink onto my scrap paper. So I'm, re I'm able to remove ink here as well. Now to change colors with your blender pen, you want to scribble it onto your scrap paper until it goes clear. 
Once it's clear, you know you're good to move on to your next color. Now for the little dress, I'm just going to add some shadows in the folds of the dress here, and then a little bit underneath that apron and along the bottom of her dress. Now let's go ahead and grab the light blue and the turquoise green and we'll do the little pants, the little overalls on our bear. And I'll just add some shadows here with that darker color again. And then I realized I forgot to color in his little foot here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly. And then let's grab the yellow and the lemon yellow and do his little shirt. And for shadows on this apron, I did want to keep it white, so I'm just using that light gray, and I'll just blend that right into the white there. Now with mustard, I'm going to do that little band-aid. And then I'll go back to a combination of those same colors that we already used and finish it coloring in these little items on the table here. There's like a little jar of pills, there's a little box with band-aids in it, and then there's a little roll of some uh, gauze. Once these images are completely dry, we'll add some highlights and some interest using a white gel pen. We're going to add some polka dots to her dress and some stripes to his shirt, and then we'll add some little highlights here and there, and that'll just make everything come to life. Now you could do some paper piecing here as well if you wanted to. If you wanted to have a little pattern dress for her, you could certainly stamp the image on some pattern paper and then cut that out and, and glue it down over top of this image. But Or you could just draw in a plaid yourself if you wanted to. Now I'm using oatmeal and dark oatmeal to do this little table. And I'm just adding some little shadows here and there. So now that our coloring is all set, let's grab that coordinating die. We're going to tape that down with a little bit of purple tape and we can go ahead and run that through the die cutting machine. I like to put a little piece of scrap paper on top once my coloring is done just to make sure that it, it doesn't get dirty or anything on it because sometimes my plates aren't always as clean as they should be. So now I've got this beautiful Spellbinders embossing folder and this is just gorgeous. This is a larger embossing folder. It measures five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and it's called the Geo Screen. And since we're making a five inch by seven inch card, I've cut a panel to that size, again out of the Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And all I need here is my platform, my embossing folder with the paper inside, and one of my plates. I'm going to run that through just one time and you can see that beautiful embossing that we get. So now let's grab some pattern paper from the Flower Market Petite Paper Pack from Lawn Fawn, and I'll grab one of each of those colors, except for that purple color. So we're going to cut some hexagon shapes, and these are the hexagon double stitch dies from Art Impressions, and we'll go ahead and cut a variety of sizes from that pattern paper. So now let's go back to this embossing folder. 
I'm using fossilized amber. This is a Distress Oxide ink from Tim Holtz. And we're going to go all the way around the edges. And I'm just using a blending brush to add that color. Now let's take some of that same ink and place it on our glass media mat. I'm spritzing it with a little bit of water from my Distress sprayer. And I'm going to go ahead and spatter this panel. And that's just going to add even a little bit more texture and interest here to our cardstock. So I'm going to spatter that entire panel and I'm using a small paintbrush so that I get some tiny little spatters here. Now I'm grabbing the Lawn Fawn Sticky Note cardstock. This is a heavyweight cardstock and this measures 7 inches by 10 inches and I'm scoring it at 5 inches and that'll be a 5 by 7 card. Now let's grab another image from that same set and we're going to stamp our sentiment. So this is going to say, feel better soon. And again, there's several cute little sentiments in that set. I'm placing it kind of in the upper left-hand corner of that hexagon and I'm going to ink that up with the Hickory Smoke archival ink this time. So again, this is a permanent ink. And I'll stamp that two or three times just to get a nice clear image. So now that that's all set, let's go ahead and pop up our image that we colored in. I'm just using some foam mounting tape and I'm just going to cut some small little chunks of that and place it all around the back just so this stays up nice. As it goes through the mail, it'll stay up nicely. So now I'm placing that right kind of towards the right hand side a little bit there. And here's where I've got that white gel pen and I'm going to come in and put three little dots on each of the cheeks. And then I'm adding some polka dots to her dress. And then I'll just add a few little highlights. Again, this just makes everything pop out a little bit more. And I added a few stripes to his little shirt there. So now that that's done, we can grab some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and glue these two panels together because these are the exact same size. That's that five by seven. And now let's go ahead and lay out the hexagons on our card. Kind of just play around with this a little bit to see where we want everything to be. And then once I like the look of that, I'm going to go ahead and start attaching these pieces. So I'm going back to that same Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. Now I'll pop up a few of these as well, just to add a little bit more interest. And again, I'm going back to that Scotch foam mounting tape to pop these up. And then for this one here, I'm going to glue it flat and I'm going to have it hanging off the card just a little bit there. I don't want to have to cut away any of my image, so I'm just going to have it stick off the side a little bit and then I'll cut away any excess. So then I thought my card needed a few little bees to go with my hexagon shapes. So I'm grabbing the Art Impressions Christmas Bee Set. We're going to grab that little string of bees there. But you can see that you could use some of these images here all throughout the year. It'd be great for some of your summer cards, the little bees and the little hexagons. And then there's a little beehive there as well. So I'm going back to that Hickory Smoke archival ink and I'm going to stamp this a few times and then what we're going to do is color these in but then we're going to cut these apart. We're just going to use these bees separately. And what's really fun here is they're all different. They have all different faces on these little bees so they'll all look a little bit different. Now I did the wings in the haze blue. I'm doing one of the little sections here with the mustard color. And then for the face, I'll, I'll add the pink with the sugared almond pink. 
and we'll finish the rest with yellow and lemon yellow. So once I had all of those colored in, I'm going to just cut those with my detail scissors. So I'm just going to cut these apart and then I'll cut around these and I'll leave a little tiny white border all the way around. So don't be too fussy here. Just quickly cut those out. And now I'm just gonna glue those down. I've placed them randomly around the card. And what was nice here is there were five of them. So it is preferable to work in odd numbers, three, five, seven, that kind of thing. And there were five, so I'm gonna go ahead and place these all down. Now, later on for my envelope, I did stamp and color in one more B, and I'll show you that a little bit later. And I'm just pressing that glue around the edges a little bit to make sure they lay nice and flat. Now I've got my Pink Fresh Studio Essentials Jewel Mix, and I'm grabbing this really pretty yellow color. Now these little jewels come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. So I've kind of grabbed a variety of those, and I've placed those all around my card. Now for a little bit more sparkle, I'm using the Wink of Stella glitter pen. This is a clear glitter pen, and I'm adding that to the wings on all of my little bees. And then I'll just add it to a few little images here on the table. So the next thing I wanna do is create an envelope for this. So I'm using the Shimmer Pastels cardstock. This is a 12 by 12 inch paper pad. And this is from Die Cuts with a View. And I have had this in my stash for quite some time. But I will link, list and link below all of the items I'm using today, but I will list and link something similar to this if this is not available. And this is a little bit lighter cardstock that's perfect for our envelope. So let's grab the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board and to create an envelope for a five by seven card, we need to cut our paper at nine and a half by nine and a half and our first score line is at the four inch mark. Again, I've cut my cardstock nine and a half by nine and a half. I'm looking for that four inch mark there in the upper left hand side. I'm lining up my paper with that marking. I'm going to punch and score. Now we don't need that ruler up at the top anymore. Now we're going to follow that score line. So that score line is going to line up with that little pointer there. And then we're going to punch and score again. And we're going to do this all the way around. So again, we're looking for that score mark and lining it up with that little pointer. We're going to punch and score. And then let's do that one more time. So again, lining up that score with that little pointer, punching and scoring. And that's it. It's really simple and easy to do. I love making my own envelopes. I can just make everything coordinate together and I think that's really fun. And this shimmer cardstock is just so pretty for an envelope. So let's go ahead and press out all of those score lines. And now we can flip this around. We're flipping around the envelope punch board and on the back side is a little corner rounder. So let's finish that off. And now we can add a little bit of tape here. I'm using the quarter inch double-sided tape. And you do wanna use something strong here. You wanna make sure your envelope stays together if it's going through the mail especially. And then I like to press out the backing with my bone folder. It just makes it a lot easier to remove that backing. And then we can fold that bottom up and we're all set. We have our envelope. Now I did decide to add a little embellishment to the back of my envelope. So I die cut another little hexagon and I added that other B that I mentioned earlier. So that just makes everything coordinate together a little bit better. So let's take a look at the finished card. And you can see we have that pretty spattering in the background and all that texture and interest from that embossing folder. And then we've got the uh, little gems and bees. So this is just a fun little whimsical card. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. And also hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.